Why are there 15 nearly identical USB-C cables and yet only one or two will actually fast charge your laptop? Charging period, but especially when getting ready for a trip can feel like a minefield, but by the end of this video, you'll know exactly what works and how to build the perfect travel charging hub for you. Not me, you. Charging modern devices while traveling is a three-way relationship between the devices themselves, the charging brick, and the right cables. We need the whole triangle, so for our step-by-step -step guide, step one is identifying whether or not you even need to get a wall plug adapter. What I mean is, if you're Canadian or American and are traveling to Japan, all of Japan's plugs are type A, very similar to the ones you have at home. Just missing that third grounding pin, but most techs sold in North America don't even have that third pin anymore, which means you might not even need to spend money on a travel adapter. To make confident decisions, all you have to do is Google specifically most common wall plug in your destination country to validate. And I say most common wall plug because some countries like Vietnam support multiple ones, but like Japan, the most common wall plugs also support type A. Point is, step one will inform you if you'll need a wall plug adapter at all. However, before you actually spend money on one, you must go through the next few steps first to determine how much wattage it'll have to support internally. Don't worry if that sounds confusing, it'll be very obvious in about 10 seconds because step two is to take your time to gather literally every last piece of chargeable tech you'll bring abroad. For some folks, it'll literally just be a phone. For me, because my annual work trip lasts five to six months, cloud hopping between four or five countries, I've got to bring quite a bit. Especially because I still try to make YouTube videos during that half year abroad. Point is, step two is to gather it all because step three is calculating the maximum simultaneous charging wattage requirements. Each device package, website, product page, or a Google search is all you need. For example, this camera, the Sony A6700, a quick Google search shows that it needs at least 18 watts to charge, but can maximize charging speed with a setup that sends about 30 watts. And so after Googling all my devices, the worst case scenario for me when it comes to simultaneous charging abroad would look like this. 100 watts for my MacBook Pro, 30 watts for my phone, 15 watts for my earbuds, 30 watts for my camera, and 18 watts to charge on my power bank all while I sleep. A grand total of 193 simultaneous watts. And that keyword, simultaneous, is important because I do pack other things that need charging. But those need to be charged sporadically and much less frequently. However, that core technology stack I'll charge every single night while I sleep means my first concrete purchasing decision is no. My charging brick must have at least 5 USB ports and be able to put through at least 193 watts at the same time. At the end of step 3, you are at a fork in the road because your total simultaneous charging needs will be either more or less than about 120 watts. If it's less than 120 watts, then all you will need is a GAN PD-enabled universal travel adapter. For example, if all you will be bringing is your phone and earbuds, which even with fast charging, likely requires about 65 watts, then something like this is all you need. And I said approximately 120 maximum simultaneously total watts, because at the time of recording this video, that's the max wattage available for this type of universal GAN PD travel adapter. However, if you, like me, discover that at the end of your step three, your tabulated maximum simultaneously required wattage is more than 120 watts, you will also need an intermediary charging hub like this one. We'll get to that intermediary hub in a moment, but to respect the time of people whose total simultaneous wattage is less than 120, let's first move on to step four, picking the right cables, which affects everyone, extra charging hub or not. With everything migrating towards USB Type-C, it's wonderful in theory, but there are so many subcategories of Type-C cables which can make choosing the right ones a nightmare. Some support more wattage throughput than others, some don't even support data transfer, while those that do support different data transfer speeds. For the specific purposes of charging, though, cables matter most because of PD, or power delivery. Skipping all the boring engineering, the PD protocol ultimately means that your modern devices can continuously communicate with a PD-enabled brick through a PD-enabled cable. To consistently talk to each other and change the flow of juice to ultimately give you the fastest and safest charging. With all of these potential variables when it comes to USB Type-C cables, my general recommendation is this. If you're going to spend money on cables anyways, because of their relative affordability, I'd suggest all of the cables you purchase have PD and be able to support at least 100 watts. Even if most of your devices, like mine, don't even need 100 watts. I mean, you can easily find a two-pack of braided high-quality PD-enabled 100 watt cables for less than $10. This will make your travel charging life so much easier because you don't have to think and pair each of your devices with the right cable. You'll have the confidence to know that literally any of the cables you bring can send maximum safe juice to all of your devices. Because again, PD will ensure that even though a cable can send 100 watts, if a device's maximum safe wattage is 30 watts, your PD brick and PD cable will throttle down automatically. 
And so if I were building a travel charging setup from scratch today, this is how our step-by-step -step process would inform my buying decisions. First, I pick up a reputable GAN PD Universal Travel Adapter because some countries I visit have a different wall plug. However, I wouldn't care that much what its internally supported wattage is. What I mean is, when you look at any of these travel adapters that advertise wattage, whether it's 100 watts on this guy or 70 watts on this guy, all refer to the maximum wattage supported internally, meaning when plugging USB cables directly into the USB ports on them. However, plugging an intermediary charging hub like I need into the wall outlet plug, so not the USB ports, will send however much juice the wall outlet has, which at worst is 500 watts in any country. This is why, for my needs of 193 watts, I don't really care what the internal max wattage is of these universal adapters because I'm not using the USB ports on them. I'm passing through using the full power from the wall and just using the adapter so it'll fit the physical shape of the actual plug itself in a different country. If your total simultaneous wattage is 120 watts or less, just buy any highly rated and reviewed GAN PD Universal adapter that supports your simultaneous wattage needs, since you will be plugging your charging cables directly into the built-in USB ports. Now, for the charging hub based on my needs from steps 2 through 4, I've gone with this GAN PD hub that supports 200 watts, a touch more than my required simultaneous 190. Looking at the business end, we can see it's got six USB Type-C ports, all that have power delivery communication capabilities, and two USB Type-A ports for older devices. However, this is important, you'll notice that when flipping the brick onto its back and zooming in, we can see on the second line that the top three, USB-C 1, 2, and 3, are each able to push up to 100 watts. It's important to note, by the way, that they cannot all push 100 watts at the same time. After all, this entire brick can push a maximum of 200 watts total simultaneously. The next two lines show that ports 4 and 5 can max out at 30 watts each, and that last Type-C port, as well as both USB Type-A ports, all max out at 15 watts each. So to keep Something simple for me, looking at the ports top down with each port's max potential output animated on the left, it makes the decision super easy based on my needs from step 2. My five nightly simultaneous charging devices are confidently covered with this PD-enabled charging hub, and of course, for those sporadically charged items, I can swap them in and out as needed. When it comes to cables, to make my life easy, I've purchased these overkill cables that go beyond my recommendation of at least 100 watts. These can each support up to 240 watts to really future-proof and, because this is a travel setup where I'll be haphazardly tossing them in and yanking them out of my travel bag, I've gone with super resilient braided cables with reinforced strain relievers to prevent bending and fraying, and that's it. My perfect travel charging setup is complete, however, I need to speed run three extremely important notes. One, this has been a video for 95 plus percent of travelers and the tech that we bring. What I mean is most modern tech like phones, laptops, tablets, and cameras are all dual voltage so they can safely charge worldwide with an adapter. But things like appliances where we're not talking about charging but rather talking about literally needing to be plugged into use like a hairdryer, even the most expensive type like the Dyson Supersonic are not dual voltage. If you'll be bringing plug into power appliances, you will also need a voltage converter on top of your wall plug adapter. Three, I recommend spending some time to consider cable length. It might not seem like it, but in real life use while traveling, there is a huge difference between a hotel room nightstand that looks like this versus a nightmare that looks like this. You know, at the end of the day, especially if you travel frequently, creating a confident, safe, and fast charging setup means that instead of packing all of this, you just need to pack this tucked cleanly into a tech caddy to keep organized and as lightweight as possible. But none of this matters if you're not prepped with the most important travel considerations. And if you're on a roll, you will definitely want to watch this video right up here. If you want to see real in-field travel though, this video down here is the one for you. I'll leave them both on screen for a few seconds so you can choose which one you want to watch next, but while you're deciding, consider subscribing and hitting that bell so you'll be notified the moment new videos just like this one drops.